Hello everyone, my name is Sam Burgess and I'm an undergraduate philosophy major in South Carolina. Today I'm going to explain Peter Singer's moral principle of equal consideration of interest for animal liberation. In 1975, the philosopher Peter Singer published a revolutionary book entitled Animal Liberation. In that book, Singer argued that our treatment of animals used for food and experimentation is morally wrong. He argued for this claim based on the moral principle of equal consideration of interest. The moral principle of equal consideration of interest claims that our moral obligations towards beings is grounded in the interests that they have. Specifically, we ought to give equal moral importance to relevantly similar interests. For example, both men and women have a relevantly similar interest in voting. This is because both men and women have a desire or preference to vote. Since both men and women have this relevantly similar interest in voting, it would be wrong to restrict voting only to men. Therefore, according to the moral principle of equal consideration of interests, a woman's interest in voting should be given equal moral importance to a man's interest in voting. In a similar way, black and white human beings both have an interest in freedom. This is because both black and white human beings have a desire or preference for freedom. Therefore, according to the moral principle of equal consideration of interest, a black human being's interest in freedom should be given the same moral importance to a white human being's interest in freedom. In short, the moral principle of equal consideration of interest is a principle of equality. It is a principle that can explain the moral wrongness of ignoring people's interests based on irrelevant characteristics like their race or sex. However, the moral principle of equal consideration of interest should not be confused with the claim that all humans should be treated the same way or be given all the same rights. In some cases, it will depend on the circumstances or the kinds of humans we are dealing with. For example, adult humans have an interest in driving a car, whereas human infants have no interest in that. Adult humans have an interest in getting a college education, whereas human infants do not. Adult humans have an interest in making autonomous medical choices, whereas this is not true of human infants. Despite this difference between adult humans and human infants in these situations, the moral principle of equal consideration of interests maintains that we should still give equal moral importance to the interests of adult humans and human infants when their interests are relevantly similar. The fact that the interests of human infants differ in some situations compared to adult humans is no basis for ignoring the relevantly similar interests that human infants do have in common with adult humans. For example, if an adult human and a human infant have a relevantly similar interest in not feeling pain, then the fact that the interests of human infants differ in some situations compared to adult humans is no basis for ignoring the pain of human infants. In short, the pain of human infants still matters morally even though human infants differ from adult humans in relevant ways. This observation shows that the rights or protections a being is entitled to are dependent on what interest that being has. Different interests will lead to different rights or treatment as the case of the adult human and human infant demonstrate. The moral principle of equal consideration of interests, therefore, provides grounds to oppose racism and sexism. As Singer points out, the practice of slavery is morally wrong according to the moral principle of equal consideration of interests since white slave owners ignore black people's interest in freedom. The sexist man who denies a woman's right to vote acts wrongly because he ignores a woman's interest in being engaged in the political process. The moral principle of equal consideration of interests claims that we ought to give equal moral importance to relevantly similar interests. We have seen that the moral principle of equal consideration of interests explains the moral wrongness of racism and sexism since these prejudiced attitudes involve ignoring the interests of black people and women based on morally irrelevant characteristics. However, as Singer points out, the moral principle of equal consideration of interests has implications for our treatment of animals used for food and experimentation. This is because animals have relevantly similar interests like human beings do. Specifically, animals have a relevantly similar interest 
and not having pain inflicted upon them. This is because animals have a desire or preference not to feel pain. Singer acknowledges that animals and humans differ in relevant ways in terms of their abilities and characteristics, which will lead to different rights and protections due to their different interests. For example, adult humans have an interest in landing a good paying job, whereas animals have no interest in that. Adult humans have an interest in voting, whereas animals do not. Adult humans have an interest in learning how to read, whereas this is not true of animals. Despite these differences between humans and animals, this is no basis for ignoring an animal's comparable interest with humans to not feel pain. To see why, consider again adult humans and human infants. As was explained earlier, there are relevant differences that exist between adult humans and human infants. Despite these differences between adult humans and human infants, that is no basis for ignoring an infant's comparable interests with adult humans not to feel pain. Therefore, if the interests of human infants count morally even though they differ from adult humans in relevant ways, so too the interests of animals must count morally even if their interests differ in relevant ways compared to humans. Specifically, if both humans and animals have a comparable interest in not feeling pain, then our reasons against causing animals pain is just as strong as our reasons not to cause humans pain. To ignore the pain of animals simply because they are not human beings is speciesism. The belief that the interests of humans count more than the interests of animals merely because they are members of the human species. Singer claims that speciesism is an analogous prejudice to racism or sexism since it is discrimination based on a morally irrelevant characteristic. This is because, according to Singer, pain is pain. In other words, pain is bad for someone regardless of the species that individual is a member of. To support the claim that speciesism is a mere prejudice, Singer points out that none of us believe it would be morally permissible for us to use a member of our own species in an extremely painful biomedical experiment, but that we do believe it would be morally permissible to use a sentient member of another species in an extremely painful biomedical experiment. Singer anticipates that a critic might plausibly respond that this is because there is a morally relevant difference between a member of our own species and a sentient member of another species that justifies this differential treatment. Specifically, the morally relevant difference is grounded in the fact that a member of our species is capable of acting rationally and a sentient member of another species is not capable of acting rationally. Moreover, members of our own species have family members that would be deeply distressed about their family member being forced to be the test subject of an extremely painful biomedical experiment. The critic concludes that a human being's capability of acting rationally can explain why it would be morally wrong to experiment on a member of our own species and therefore can avoid the charge of prejudice against a member of another species. Singer argues that even on the assumption that a being's capability to act rationally is morally relevant, this response is inadequate to justify the differential treatment between members of our own species and sentient members of another species. To see why this is the case, consider the following scenario. Suppose there is a brain-damaged human infant named Bob. Brain-damaged Bob has never been and will never be rational but can still feel pain. We could even specify that brain damaged Bob is an orphan and therefore has no family that would be concerned about the extreme pain he would be subjected to in the biomedical experiment. Given that brain damaged Bob lacks the capability to act rationally, his intelligence and ability to feel pain is similar to that of an animal. Even though brain damaged Bob's intelligence and ability to feel pain is similar to an animal, we still believe that it would be morally wrong to use him in an extremely painful biomedical experiment, but morally permissible to use an animal. This is because we believe that brain damaged Bob's pain counts more than the similar pain of an animal merely because he is a member of our species. However, if we think that brain damaged Bob's pain counts more than the similar pain of an animal merely on the grounds that he is a member of our species, how is this attitude any different from a racist? After all, both the racist and speciesists 
believe that the interests of someone outside their group count less than their own interests merely because that being is not a member of their group. Singer concludes that this example shows that we are simply prejudiced against taking seriously the interests of sentient members of another species. The moral principle of equal consideration of interest claims that we ought to give the same moral importance to relevantly similar interests. For example, if the act of punching a pig in the face and a human in the face would cause the same amount of pain to both of them, then the act of punching a pig in the face and a human in the face is equally wrong in both cases. Punching a human in the face is no worse than punching a pig in the face because both acts cause the same amount of pain. When the moral principle of equal consideration of interest is applied to specific practices where we use animals, the implications of accepting this moral principle are revolutionary. Consider the practice of industrial farming. On industrial farms, animals are treated in ways that cause them a great deal of pain. Many of these animals are confined in cages so small that they cannot even turn around, are mutilated without painkillers, and are slaughtered in extremely painful ways. Given that industrial farmers ignore an animal's interest in not feeling pain, the farmer fails to give equal consideration to the relevantly similar interests of animals in his interactions with them. Since the industrial farmer fails to give equal consideration to the relevantly similar interests of animals, he thereby acts wrongly when he chooses to raise them for food. Therefore, the practice of industrial farming is morally wrong and should be abolished because it defies the moral principle of equal consideration of interests. Industrial farms frustrate an animal's relatively similar interest in not feeling pain and is therefore morally wrong. Singer argues that since industrial farming is morally wrong, people living in the developed countries where industrial farming occurs are under a moral obligation not to support or contribute to the continued existence of industrial farms. Singer claims there are two reasons for this. First, he claims it is morally wrong to support practices that are morally wrong, and secondly, that industrial farms will not cease to exist until there is a complete boycott of the animal products it produces. The consequence of accepting the moral wrongness of industrial farming is that those of us living in developed countries are morally obliged to become ethical vegans or abstain from buying or eating animal products. This same line of reasoning also applies to animals that are used in extremely painful biomedical experiments. Since animals used in extremely painful biomedical experiments have an interest in not feeling pain, scientists act wrongly when they perform extremely painful biomedical experiments on them. Therefore, Singer argues that almost all biomedical experiments performed on animals are morally wrong and should be stopped. However, since Singer is a utilitarian, he leaves open the possibility that certain biomedical experiments on animals, or even humans, could be morally permissible or even morally obligatory if the good consequences generated by the experiment outweighed the harms that the scientists caused to the test subjects. Singer has argued against industrial farming based on the moral principle of equal consideration of interest. According to this moral principle, we ought to give equal moral importance to relevantly similar interests. Since animals share a relatively similar interest in not feeling pain with humans, we ought not to cause pain to animals. But since factory farms ignore an animal's interest in not feeling pain, we should not support factory farming and be ethical vegans. So far, Singer has not explained what implications the principle of equal consideration of interest has for the painless killing of animals. If animals have an interest in staying alive, then the moral principle of equal consideration of interest would rule out the moral permissibility of killing animals, even if done painlessly. However, according to Singer, most animals do not have an interest in staying alive. Singer maintains that a being can only have an interest in staying alive if it has a desire to go on living. Most animals, except for chimpanzees and other great apes, lack a desire to go on living, Singer argues, because they do not possess the concept of themselves existing over time. In other words, most animals do not know that death involves non-existence. 
Since most animals do not have a desire for continued existence and, for this reason, lack the interest to stay alive, it is not morally wrong to end the life of most animals if it is done painlessly. Therefore, the moral principle of equal consideration of interests does not rule out the moral permissibility of non-industrial farming on animals that lack self-consciousness in principle. The moral principle of equal consideration of interests only rules out the moral permissibility of factory farming. To help clarify this idea, let us consider a thought experiment. Suppose there is a burning building with a dog and an adult human being trapped inside. You know that you only have time to save one, and therefore someone will have to be left behind. According to the moral principle of equal consideration of interest, you ought to save the adult human being over the dog because the adult human has an interest in continuing to live, whereas the dog does not. If the adult human being were to die, for example, his long-term dreams and plans for the future would be frustrated or disrupted by his death whereas this is presumably not true of the dog. Since the adult human being has an interest in continuing to live and the dog does not, the moral principle of equal consideration of interest maintains that you ought to save the adult human being over the dog. It is absolutely crucial to point out, however, that the action of saving the adult human being instead of the dog is not a form of speciesism. According to the moral principle of equal consideration of interest, the reason for why we should save the adult human being instead of the dog is grounded in the fact that the adult human being has an interest in continuing to exist, which the dog does not have. Given that the reason for why we ought to save the adult human being over the dog is grounded in the adult human being's interest rather than his species membership, the choice to save the adult human being over the dog is therefore not speciesism. To see why, consider a modified version of this thought experiment. Suppose instead that the adult human being is permanently comatose and the dog is normal and healthy. According to the moral principle of equal consideration of interests, we ought to save the dog over the permanently comatose adult human being since the permanently comatose adult human being no longer has any interest at all due to being permanently comatose. By contrast, the dog has an interest in avoiding the pain that the flames in the burning building would cause him. Therefore, in this modified version of the burning building thought experiment, the moral principle of equal consideration of interest would maintain that we should save the dog over the permanently comatose adult human being. This is because the dog has interests, specifically an interest in avoiding the pain that the flames in the burning building would cause him. By contrast, the permanently comatose adult human being does not have any interest at all. This is because he has no psychological capacities, and therefore has no interest to consider according to the moral principle of equal consideration of interest. The moral principle of equal consideration of interest claims that we ought to give equal moral importance to relevantly similar interests. We have seen that Singer believes that it is morally wrong to cause animals pain since it violates an animal's interest in not feeling pain, but that it is not morally wrong to painlessly kill most animal species since they lack an interest in continuing to live. However, even though the moral principle of equal consideration of interest does not rule out non-industrial farming in principle, Singer still maintains that we ought to be ethical vegans for practical purposes anyway. There are two reasons for this. He argues, first, that virtually all the animal products produced in the developed countries come from factory farms, and so it is practically impossible for most of us to eat animal products without supporting factory farms. Secondly, even on non-industrial animal farming operations, the animals are still subjected to many painful procedures while being raised for food. For example, many animals are still castrated without painkillers, are painfully branded, are separated from their families, and are roughly transported and slaughtered in ways that cause the animals a great deal of pain. Singer concludes that farming animals on industrial farms or non-industrial farms can be shown to be morally wrong on grounds that such practices violate the moral principle of equal consideration of interest by ignoring an animal's interest in not feeling pain. Now that I have explained Singer's moral principle of equal consideration of interest, I want to point out two advantages or reasons for why it is plausible. 
One reason the moral principle of equal consideration of interest is powerful is that it argues from the common sense moral belief that it is morally wrong to cause animals pain and shows how our use of animals used for food and experimentation is morally wrong even on this modest assumption. Singer observes that people are generally more confident about the moral wrongness of causing animals pain and are much less confident about the moral wrongness of painlessly killing animals. There are two reasons for this. First, people generally do not believe that the lives of animals are as important as human lives, and therefore it is widely held that animal life can often be sacrificed for the benefit of human beings. Secondly, the issue of killing animals is much more controversial and complicated than the question of causing animals pain. Indeed, there is much controversy and complication about the moral wrongness of killing members of our own species as the debate over abortion, the death penalty, and euthanasia demonstrate. Since Singer does not challenge widely held moral intuitions about the moral wrongness of painlessly killing animals, he makes his case for the abolition of industrial farming and the near abolition of animal experimentation more plausible because his moral principle of equal consideration of interest only relies on the acceptance of the premise that it is morally wrong to cause animals pain. Another reason Singer's moral principle of equal consideration of interest is powerful is that it is compatible with any moral theory. In discussions of moral issues, sometimes a philosopher will advance an argument that is based on the acceptance of a particular moral theory. When that happens, this invites the response by his critics that their argument has no force because it is based on an implausible moral theory. For example, if Singer's moral principle of equal consideration of interest were based entirely on the moral theory of utilitarianism, a critic could simply respond that utilitarianism is an implausible moral theory and therefore that Singer's moral principle of equal consideration of interest should be rejected on these grounds. Since Singer does not commit his moral principle of equal consideration of interest to any moral theory, he forces his critics to face his moral principle of equal consideration of interest directly. The advantage of this strategy is that it shifts focus away from the interminable debate over the question of which moral theory is correct and helps us more easily reach a resolution on our treatment of animals. That concludes my explanation of Peter Singer's moral principle of equal consideration of interest for animal liberation. In the next video, I will explain objections that have been raised against the moral principle of equal consideration of interest. In the meantime, here are questions from my audience. Do you think Singer's moral principle of equal consideration of interest is persuasive? Why or why not? Do you think we need to accept the moral principle of equal consideration of interest to argue that our treatment of animals used for food and experimentation is morally wrong? What would Singer's moral principle of equal consideration of interest entail about the morality of eating meat grown in a lab?